Chag Sameach. There we go. I uh, want to invite you to take this opportunity, if you do not have a source sheet, to grab a source sheet. Shira's got source sheets, so if you need one, just raise your hand. So I thought because it's the seventh day of, of Pesach, because it is a Yom Tov, we'll uh, take this opportunity, instead of doing a traditional sermon, to do a little, a, a little bit of learning together, a little bit of studying together. I have two sources that I really wanted us to kind of pick through. And the question that I want us to all have in our heads as we're going through this and going through the rest of our Pesach holiday, and really all the way through this period of the Omer, is a question of why do we have ritual? So I'll say it one more time. Why do we have ritual? In Judaism, what is the importance, what is the significance of having something physical that's equated with our spirituality? Now, there are different ways, different monotheistic faiths, and different faiths in general have different approaches to ritual. Some religions, some sects of different religions are more ritual heavy, and in Judaism, we definitely have an emphasis on ritual. And if you think about, especially during the Shalosh Regalim, these three pilgrimage holidays that we have, including Sukkot, uh, Shavuot, and, um, and Pesach, which we're in right now, we think about how heavy these holidays are, especially when it comes to ritual. Okay, so this is a question we're thinking of in our mind throughout the rest of this holiday and through the whole period of the Omer. What is the significance of ritual within Judaism? Now we're going to look at two of these sources that are going to give us a little bit of a guide, at least in my opinion, a little bit of a guide about why ritual is so, so important. But now that we're in this period where we're actually leaving our seders, which is the easiest and probably the most palpable sense of actually having some connection to our history and to our past because we are spending hours and hours with family and friends doing something that is very ritualized, we are entering a period that is actually a little bit more difficult. The seventh and eighth days of Passover don't have a Seder. Right? We don't have that same ritualistic idea, but we do have every single night something that we get to ritualistically do all the way to Shavuot called the Omer. Which means that every night we are supposed to stand Wherever we are, we're at synagogue or if we're at our homes, we stand, we have our head covered, just as we would for any other bracha, for any other blessing, and we count. And so far we've counted six nights, and we're going all the way to Shavuot. But in some ways, counting the Omer is actually really tough, spiritually. Because if we think about the Seder, if we think about Sukkot, when we're actually dwelling in these Sukkot, if we think about Lulav and Etrog, and all of these things that are very physical. Omer is an omission. It's an absence. What we do is we stand and we count. Now this used to be a period where you would be turning in your wheat offering. So it was a very physical reminder every single day. But now there's actually a lack of something there. And if I think about it, it's one of the things that I think is, is kind of missing in, in our practice of how we do the Omer, because even in Christianity, you know, they have um, Advent calendars, right, where each and every day there's a physical thing. You are taking out one of the days and you have a piece of candy or chocolate or something. But the Omer really doesn't have a physical attachment to it other than standing. We stand for the bracha wherever we are, and we say the blessing. So why is this ritual so important? So let's go into our first source, which is coming from the Rambam, which is coming from the Maima, come, coming from Maimonides, excuse me, in the Middle Ages, in his guide for the for the perplexed, the philosophical work about how this whole Judaism thing is supposed to work. And the Rambam says, Shavuot Yom Matan Torah. Shavuot is the anniversary of the revelation on Mount Sinai. In order to raise the importance of this day. We count the days that pass since the preceding festival, which is the second day of Pesach, just as one who expects his most intimate friend on a certain day counts the days and even the hour. Okay, so we have this idea of the Omer being something that we are looking forward to, just as if we had a good friend coming into town that we haven't seen in a year, we are counting down the days and even the hours until we can see our friend. The only problem here is, anyone? We're counting the wrong way. We don't have a countdown. We're not saying it's only this many days, it's only this many hours until we get to see our friend. Right? If you think about it, all these things, big countdowns, and the countdown to Super Bowl Sunday, the countdown to whatever it might be, the countdown to certain sales that are coming up, 
It is a way of garnering excitement, of garnering, garnering enthusiasm for a special day. But the Omer doesn't work that way. It isn't a countdown until we get to see our friend. We're counting the days that have already passed. So why are we counting the days that have already passed? Well, let's move on to our next source. Come also from the Middle Ages, Sefer HaKinuk, which the author is actually unknown, but is very similar to the Mishnah Torah. It is similar to Maimonides' uh, conception of talking about the Parsha with Halakha, with legal insight. So Sefer, Sefer HaKinuk, responds to what the Rambam is saying by saying the reason that we count from the bringing of the Omer so many days have passed and are counting rather than counting how many days remain shows our great desire to reach the time of Shavuot. Therefore, we do not want to mention at the beginning of our counting such a large number of days that remain until we reach the offering of the two loaves on Shemini Atarit on Shavuot. Okay, so we'll take a little break there. So what's the reason that we count the opposite direction instead of the countdown? Anyone? Because it's depressing to start with 49 days. That's so many days away. How do we do a countdown like that? It is so far. Yeah, sure, cool. Well done. How do we do a countdown when it's so far away when we're supposed to be garnering our excitement, but it doesn't make us excited if we're counting 49 days away. It makes us depressed. We have 49 days left until we get to celebrate this great wedding that we call Shavuot. This great wedding between Israel and God, where we receive Torah. And Sefer HaKinu continues, we should not find it difficult to understand that once we have passed the halfway mark, where we're actually getting closer to being able to count down to Shavuot, we do not count down the few days remaining as one should not change the nature of the counting in the middle. And why do we begin counting from the day after Pesach and not from the first day? The answer is that the first day is entirely dedicated to remembering the great miracle of Yitziat Mitzrayim, of the exodus from Egypt, which is a sign and evidence of the fact that God created the world and of the existence of divine providence. So we may not mix something else into that happiness and mention a different idea with it. As such, the counting begins from the second day. So here we are with two different sources telling us the meaning of Omer, telling us the meaning of this ritual. Even though we don't have anything physical, every single night we are standing up, we are covering our head, we are saying a bracha, and we are counting. And according to these two sources, the reason for doing so, other than the symbolic offering of the wheat, is to garner excitement. We're supposed to be getting excited for Shavuot. Which means that each and every single day that we get closer to Shavuot, we should be more and more and more excited about this great holiday that we get to celebrate. Which brings us back to the original question. What is the power, what is the importance of ritual? Now I'm going to give you my drash, but I'll let you take the conversation back to your tables, to your family, because I think it's a really important question that we need to chew on. My drash is that the reason that we engage in ritual is not to recreate history, even though that is a fundamental part of what we do as Jews. We remember the history that we have, just like Rabbi Starr said earlier. We remember the day we left Mitzrayim. We remember the day we crossed the sea. We remember all of these specific times in this memory of history that we call Zachor, of remembering, of really remembering our past. But what Rabbi Gamliel reminds us of during the Pesach Seder is that we're not meant to recreate history. Our goal in ritual is not to create a pageant to say this is what our ancestors did. Our goal in ritual is to make the history part of our present. We are not commanded to remember the ancestors who went out of Egypt. We are commanded to leave Egypt ourselves. As if we are in the multitude of our ancestors who are leaving Egypt even though physically we are not leaving Egypt, spiritually, we are on our journey to somewhere very holy. As we count down our exodus from Egypt, our Yitzhak Mitzrayim, all the way to Shavuot, to our opportunity to reclaim covenant and to reclaim the Torah in a very meaningful and personal way. So what's ritual there for? 
That ritual is there to get us maybe even a fragment, maybe just a ta'am, maybe just a little bit of a taste of the excitement that our ancestors had when they were leaving slavery and heading not only just towards freedom, but towards covenant. And that's powerful. It's incredibly powerful. And if we can get just a fragment of that enthusiasm, then we know what ritual is working. We know that ritual is doing something, that it is hitting us right in our hearts, that we are not doing something because we are commanded and because we are obligated alone. We're doing something because we have a commandment to live the same lives our ancestors lived. To march every single day closer and closer to Torah, that our Hebrew calendar reflects the calendar that our ancestors embodied as well. And if we maintain that, if we internalize that, if we add that to our kavanah, then we're not recreating. We're not making pageantry. We're not representing something that happened in the past. We're taking the beauty of our story and we're making it part of our present.